Good morning, everyone. It's Christine. Happy Monday. I hope you all had a great weekend. We were in Arkansas for Travel Ball. So I thought it would be fun to come on and show what we do in our classrooms for sensory bottles for my littles, like my little ones that are like infant to one that are almost two and some of my two-year-olds. So I gave my family a task. They were supposed to drink a 12 pack of mini water bottles. Yep, 12 of them. How many do you think I got back? I told them not to throw them in the trash. Four. Got four back. But I'm going to show you some of the things that we do with our sensory bottles for the littles. And this is great. Even if you're not in a child care center or you have a family in home, this is good to do with your grandkids, your friends' kids. But sensory bottles are great. And it's even more fun if the kids make their own bottle because they're invested. If they're invested in that bottle, they're going to use it when they're trying to calm themselves down. So I ran into an issue though. When I went to buy the stuff for the sensory bottles, my husband, good morning, Carrie. My husband and I are laughing. My 11 year old came home and he saw this on the table. He saw the aquarium gravel. So he thought that we were getting a fish and I'm like, we are not getting a fish. And then he's like, well, now I want a fish. And I'm like, oh, here we go again. So I don't know, we're moving into a new house soon. So maybe we'll end up with a fish, we'll see. At least that's less maintenance than some other animals. So I worked on making some sensory bottles. I'm gonna show you a few in a couple minutes. Um, what I did wanna talk about today is we've got a comedian at our center. This little girl is funny. In the last couple of weeks, her personality has really came out. And so we give jobs in the classroom. And so I'm in my preschool classroom one day and I uh, look at uh, my one worker and I'm like, hey, I need someone to help me in this block center. I bought some brand new stuff for the block center. We're setting it up, we're redoing it. When you switch toys out, it makes it easier. The kids are a little bit more entertained. And so we had bought some more stuff. So we'd gotten some ocean animals. I had put the Lincoln logs back in. So I'm switching out my block center, but the center, I labeled it, but not all of it's labeled. The stuff's not going back to where it belongs. And so the kids were doing an activity and I'm like, stopped everyone. I was like, class, class. And they're all like, yes, yes. And I'm like, who would like to be responsible for the block center? Miss Christine's not moving on to redo another center until we get the block center done. So who wants to talk about who wants to put the people away and all that stuff. And we look at this one little girl, me and her make eye contact. And all of a sudden you see her go, like, you're not gonna have me do the block center. She was like, ow. And I even told them I'd give them a chocolate gold coin and me and the employee were laughing so hard. Now this is the same girl last week that told me, she literally, after a kid had done something, I'm like, that's not okay, you can't do that. She raises her hand and I'm like, yes. And she's like, Miss Christine, just so you know, I would never do that. And we were laughing like crazy. And I tell her dad and he goes, oh, she would do it. She's just saying that. So we've got our class crown that's just coming out with personality that is new to our center. So that's been a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you one of our first um, sensory bottles. This is the one with the gravel in it. That was for the aquarium. Now, I didn't put anything in this yet, but these are very colorful. Uh, and these are the smaller bottles. So my younger classrooms, we use the smaller bottles. It's just easier for them to hold and carry around. Um, less likely to drop, although we know they're gonna drop it. But I'm gonna show you what I bought. Since it's aquarium, I did buy the kids these button fish. So these are these little button fish that are gonna go inside it so they can play I spy and look for the different fish. I feel like Elmo may be in here somewhere. Not Elmo, what's that one fish called? From Dory, maybe, maybe it's Dory I'm thinking of. But here's all the different fish that go in here. So we're just gonna take them, take the buttons, and we're gonna put them in, and then I'm gonna shake it around, and then we're gonna play I Spy with the kids. So what we're gonna do is when you seal your bottles, you have to be very, very careful to make sure you do it right because you don't want the kids opening them up. So you can use um, super glue or we use the glue gun. I am, after that, sometimes we take um, duct tape and then we'll get different colors. Yes, Tracy, Nemo, I'm having a day. So anyways, I'm gonna shake up my fish and you can leave a little bit more room. You can put it half full, but this is gonna be for the infant room and the ones and the twos. And I've got my fish now hidden in here and the kids, there's some, see, there's some fish that are about to pop out. So the kids can play with these for the sensory bottles. But I use the smaller ones. I just think it's just easier for them to hold. In the next couple days this week, I'll go through some of the other sizes we use and the different types of bottles I use that are thicker when we make our sensory bottles. And then here is, and what I did was I bought two different types of fish. So I actually did a second one that I'm gonna to put together. And the only reason I did that is because I was, a little sometimes it's harder when they don't understand, they want the same one and they make cool noise. But I've got my, let's see, there's an octopus in this one. 
So I got the buttons. So I just go to the button section at Walmart and I pick out different ones. They had cats, they had dogs, but I thought with the aquarium stuff, the fish would go with it. So I got two of those. Then here's my other one. These ones are easy to take off the labels. I was like, and I let these dry out. Um, but this is what I have for this one. So we can teach colors. So colors is the next one. So I just bought pom-poms. So one of my classrooms, that's all they did is they had the kids come through and the kids made the bottle. And this is good for their fine motor skills for the littles and they can do counting in my under two classroom. And then we just put these all in. And then once you get it full, you can shake it up with them. But it's soft too, because you're gonna teach them that it's soft as they're going through and counting with their little ones. And so this one will all be just fully red. And then I had bought, I don't go through all the colors with pom-poms because what we actually do is we go through our arts and crafts center and I have extra pieces left over like from um, felt, felt's a good one, pipe cleaner's a good one with colors to put in there. Um, tissue paper's another good one where you can cut up the, all the different colors of tissue paper and you can make a rainbow one or you can just make it specific colors. But it's stuff that's soft that the kids can actually put in themselves and it's not harmful to them with a the teacher there helping them. Now they had one and I could not find it this weekend but I bought part of it. I got my Jingle Bells. And this one for the Jingle Bells um, to go in here, they put bows. So it's actually called Bells and Bows. And the kids love this one. And I'm actually gonna make two of them. I could not find the right size of bows, but they use actually small Christmas bows, or you could use the mini, mini hair bows. And that was another one that my girls did that I thought was super, super cool. The aquarium bag that we have, just so you know, um, I got this one at Walmart. What size was this one? This was the two pound bag. This fits, I believe, I did two bottles, like three bottles it looks like for the small ones, but I highly recommend getting your sensory bottles in. These are good when the kids are having a moment and you can redirect the littles there. Cause I try not to put my littles in time away unless they're hurting someone for a minute per their age. So I try to redirect them to something else that they can do that's not gonna harm someone else. So if they're trying to shake a toy that doesn't shake or they're not using a musical instrument, you redirect them to the sensory or to the musical instrument because the kids love, love hearing it shake and it sounds like rain. So anyway, oh, there's my fish. I already found two fish, see them? They're in there, oh, there's three. Anyways, I hope you guys learned something new today. I will talk to you guys later and you guys have an amazing, great day. Thanks for watching.